Good, e good afternoon, everybody. Uh, more and more names keep getting linked with Newcastle United. Uh, and, uh, well, some big, big names, uh, some big, big rumours. Uh, so let's have a look. This is the transfer show. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Tune Review with myself and Alex as, uh, well, uh, a hastily arranged transfer show. Um, we are seriously putting in the effort on this channel at the moment. Uh, Alex did text yesterday uh, to see if we wanted to do a transfer show last night with all the names. But, of course, uh, I was in London, so uh, I was unable to do it. So we've, we've scheduled this one in, uh, but we will be doing the preview show as organized at 8 o'clock as well. So uh, do tune in for that when Billy Danielle will be back with us. And we'll have Chloe as well from uh, uh, from a Brighton's pers perspective. She's been on the channel before. Uh, lots and lots of names mentioned, so we, we will do as uh, as many as we can today. But we we're going to look at the probably the bigger players. To be honest, um, you know, the, I mean, the, <laughs> to be fair, they're all quite big players. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Alex literally finished work half an hour ago, scoffing a, at what looks like a crumpet. Uh, I'm still yet to have me tea, but uh, guys, if you do appreciate it, please do hit that like button. And uh, if you're new, as usual, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are, as I say, putting the effort in here, bringing these shows to you as much as we can. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, donate to the channel as well, hit that dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments and I'll take you through that way. So thank you in advance for that. Um, we'll go through a couple of comments before we start, just so we don't get too far behind on the comments, of course. Uh, Raymond says, I've said uh, I've said before, I'm so happy I found this channel. Used to watch others, but only watch this one now. Thank you, buddy. Uh, great content and quality panel, as always. Love Paul's pronunciations, as well as status in-depth stats, stats. Not to mention uh, Billy's legendary one-liners, Daniel's hatred for Manua. Uh, Tom says, evening. Shame I can't get down to Tranmere in the League Cup due to work. I have plenty of family who are Tranmere fans. Uh, I'm doing Wolves the following Sunday, though. Uh, first away since COVID. I uh, hope the trip goes well from Tom. Uh, red hot here today, afternoon all. Yeah, it's melting everywhere. Uh, Alvin, good afternoon. Uh, my two of you, brothers and sisters, hope everyone is well. Uh, good afternoon, troll, tro trolls, trolls. Uh, I have a headache with all the transfer rumours. I don't know what is true and what isn't. Well, we'll try and clarify that a bit more at the end of the day. Uh, Alvin, thank you very much for your $5 super chat. Uh, good afternoon, Paul and Alex. Looking forward to another great show. Uh, Gary says, good afternoon, Paul and Alex uh, and everyone in the chat. Uh, keep everything respectful and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Spider, good afternoon, guys. Hope everyone is well and keen for Saturday. Uh, come on the tune, 2-0 two win. Afternoon, Jock. I uh, hope you're well. Pilo Keith, Carl, good evening. Uh, good afternoon. I can't, I'm so used to saying good evening. Uh, Jim says, afternoon, all bloody hot, isn't it? Well, it is here in Bristol. Uh, scorching in Hull. Scorch you, says Gary. Uh, Keith says, afternoon, you lovely people. A wee bit burnt. Oh, dear. Try not to get burnt, man. Uh, afternoon, all, says Munch. Uh, is everyone? Is anyone else sick of the transfer window? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's... It's it swings and roundabouts at the minute, to be honest, on the transfer window. Uh, Michael says, hi, everyone. Happy to get to watch a show live. Can't wait. Uh, Kamal, uh, hi. Uh, Soli says, a lovely early stream afternoon, Toon Review family. Hope you're all well. Uh, Paul Hansen, afternoon all at Toon Review. Uh, hope everyone being sensible in the sun. It's hot out there. Looking forward to another excellent show. Um, hopefully some good news about Paquetta, fingers crossed. Uh, good afternoon to uh, Mrs. Toon Review. Uh, I've literally just seen her five minutes ago. So, <laughs> um, James Wells, thank you for your 79 pence super chat, matey. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, Alex, interesting that the Premier League have announced that um, there will be a drinks break this weekend because of the hot weather. I, mean, I think it's pretty standard, to be fair. It's mm. nice to see them implementing things as and when is appropriate and being, yeah. you know, concise and safe because normally it's not that. Normally things is, it's always a big song and dance, whether it's injuries or concussions or medical things or, uh, so at least this has just come through at an appropriate time. So yeah, well, as long as people don't try and abuse it, if, as long as the referee's in, con in control of it. 
Uh, Mason says, afternoon, everyone. What's your thoughts on Fulham nearing the signing of Willian? Uh I hadn't seen that. I haven't seen it either, but listen, you know, it is what it is. Uh, football stars is big up Paul and Alex. Devin's listening at work. Um, Adam, good afternoon. Francisco says, hey, lads, cheers from the war of Caribbean. Excited by the links and news as fans. We must keep our expectations in check. Trust Eddie and the club. Uh, they know what they are doing. Uh, well, at least somebody does, because I haven't got a Scooby. Um, there have been very uh, few leaks since Astroth has come in. Hopefully some surprise breakthroughs very soon. Um, James, good afternoon. Genk, good afternoon. Uh, Kath, good afternoon. Hope you're well. Um, Steve says, How was the train back from London in this weather, Paul? The train was fine, just the fact that I couldn't get bloody Wi Fi, uh, both ways. It was very annoying. Um, because if I could have got Wi Fi, I could have maybe set a show up for Alex and Billy last night, but uh, you know, it wasn't to be. Um, but uh, very, very tired, I have to say. But uh, you know, life goes on. I have. Uh, actually, uh, in the last couple of days, uh, quit vaping as well. Um, and well, I used to have the odd cigarette from time to time. I've cut that out as well. So I'm now just on lozenges. I'm not vaping. I'm not doing anything. I'm not inhaling anything. I'm just, uh, and I, you know, after two days, I'm, I'm feeling all right, actually. Um, but I get a lot of support and I'm determined to stay off them anyway. Uh, son of THC says, uh, should be no earlier than 6 p.m. and no later than 8 p.m. in my opinion. However, in an oddball, I have mine about 11 p.m., so pay no notice. I've got no idea what he's talking about. Uh, FIFA RTG with Newcastle being off of Ziyech, Pulisic and Hudson and Doy. I hope we loan Pulisic. Uh, Angelica says, hiya, Paul. Uh, today is my 15th wedding anniversary. My present is my tune top is coming today between 5 and 7. Uh, well, speaking of tops, Alex, my uh, Loch Ness one arrived today. Uh, I want I, the new. I want the new one, the the our one, but they're all sold out already. So yeah, I know. Um, but it's it's a five XL, and I swear to God, it is more like an XL, two XL. It is shocking. Oh really? It's terrible. The manufacturer? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of them. But uh, w- one thing I do know is that it's like super tight. It's one of them tight fitting ones. Um, but I'm going to give it away on the show tonight. Uh, so if anybody. Um, once the Loch Ness top, uh, I'll show it on the show later on. Uh, you can comment on the show tonight that you want it, and then those of you that want it, just go into a quick draw, and there you go, you can have it. Um, Barbara, good evening, uh, afternoon. Hope to pop over for another game soon. Looking forward to the show. Uh, Ryan says, I'm driving on the highway whilst watching this. Well, be careful. Um, Johnny says, What do you make of Buzzer on YouTube? Uh, he's saying Paquetta, but coming this weekend again. Look, we're not in the know. We're don't not in care. the know. So we, we 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 are not in the know. We don't claim to be in the know. We never have been in the know. We talk about it when it's fact, okay? And we always have done on this channel. Uh, other channels may do exactly what they want to do. That's fair enough. That's up to them. We on this channel, we only deal in facts and not rumors or who we've heard it from. We deal with fact. So as soon as it's officially announced, we talk about it. Uh, Paul Sprague, good afternoon. Uh, my real name is Mr. Ting. First name is Mel. <laughs> yeah, I was a few <laughs> few uh, Mr. Mel Tings out there today. Afternoon, John. Afternoon, Brian. Uh, Mark, good afternoon. Just waiting to hear about Paquetta. Right, we may as well get into it, Alex. Uh, who do you want to bring up first? Uh, not Paquetta. Uh, this is this has got to be priority viewing mm. today. It's Gonzalo okay. Ramos. Yes. Purely this because guy, it by the way, like looks the absolutely... Movie. He's a beast, this guy. I have to say. Yeah, so I've had a, a few people, mm, a few people arguing with me and other people on Twitter and on certain shows and different things about him. Um, what I will say is, content creators, we're not all professional scouts. We haven't watched everybody. So, mm. have I seen this kid play more than half an hour? No, I haven't. Mm. But well, unless I saw him in the Champions League and, and don't remember it, which to be fair, I don't. So it's not helpful. Um, so yeah, please stop attacking people when they're just trying to analyze and, and give you more information than you can be bothered to research yourself. Certain mm. people out there doing well, it. that's what um, people are like, you know, they'll, they'll have a go at you despite the work you do, but you know, well, there's a lot of people that... complaining about his, uh, his goals to appearances, 
when in reality, I think somebody was complaining on Twitter today about he'd only he'd made 33 appearances and it wasn't enough goals for him. When in reality, he'd only made 17 starts, which is the key point in when you when you're trying to add that up. Right. Anyway, that's by the way. So, Gonzalo Ramos. Uh, this was first reported by. Oh dear, what was his name again? It was Pedro Supervalda, something like that. Uh, and we weren't sure whether he was a yeah Pedro Sepulveda on Twitter. He was a he's a journalist, verified journalist. We weren't yeah. sure if it was legit or not. And then he appeared on Sky Sports. Literally, the guy from Twitter was on Sky Sports. Yeah. So yeah. interesting. Uh, it does seem a few different sources. I think I think Fabrizio Romano has also tweeted about him. So it's got more traction than some of our other like links or rumors. This has got way more traction. Um, so he is a young 21 year old Portuguese striker. Uh, he didn't get the reason he didn't get more than 17 starts is because obviously Darwin Nunez was the main man for Benfica last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy sort of had to fill in where appropriate and where, when he, when he could, yep. um, still regarded as, as a very high talent. Um, and yeah, the, the plan was was for him to step up this year and, and replace the output that that Darwin Nunez is, is obviously, you know, leaving. So, and then he's he's just been linked with moves away, which is an interesting one. Uh, there's not really there's not really any data on him because they don't show FB Ref stuff for the Portuguese league. So I will bring you to his sofa score because we can get a little bit more of an idea of how he's done recently. Uh, so, if we scroll down here, we can see his games. In the last couple of months, so he played three under twenty one games um, for Euro qualification and scored in all three of them consecutively. And then they started the Benfica preseason. He scored twice against Fulham, Premier League opposition, not bad. And then he scored against us, Premier League opposition as well. Albeit yep. it was a strange game, but you know that being said, three goals out of four games in your in your preseason is not too shabby. With with the goals all coming against Premier League opposition, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, he had the Champions League qualifiers, so they had a home a home and an away leg. He got a hat trick in in the first game, and an assist in the second game. That's just just been a couple of days ago. Two that was two days ago that was, uh, and then sandwiched in between that is his first league game of the season, in which he also assisted. Uh, only got a six point nine, but still assisted. So in recent months, he's he's been very, very involved, very, very clinical. Um, and you can see sort of things starting to spike a little bit. Obviously, this is this is unfair because it doesn't show you data for June, July, which is his preseason. But mm -hmm. if it did, it would be like an upward trajectory. Basically, since February, he's just been going up and up and up um, in terms of performances and output and ratings. Uh, so just to show you how he's being used for them. Where are you, Benfica? There you are. So we are in a lovely, nice 4-4-2. And he's playing as the right-sided striker. So just to give you an idea of how he did in that game, not amazing. 45 minutes played, three key passes. He got an assist. So quite creative, you know, despite only playing the half. Um, and then in the first round, when he got the hat trick, they played a 4-3-3 with him being at the tip of the 4-3-3. Mm -hmm. That's what we play. Um, <laughs> it is. And all, look at that heat map. That's ridiculous. His heat map is literally just only in the opposition goal. Um, so three goals, six shots on target, which is very impressive. Um, two off, four big chances missed, which is something I, I've I've highlight I highlighted this yesterday. Is um, that means he could have had seven goals <laughs> if he missed four and still scored a hat trick. He could have had seven, which mm -hmm. in a Champions League qualifier is ridiculous. Um, for a 21 year old, you know, this isn't some goal like Ballon d'Or contender. This is just a 21 year old Portuguese kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty disgusting, to be fair. And he, he looks very involved, you know, four, four out of seven ground duels, six out of eight aerial duels. So he was getting very stuck into this game and he's, he's very young. So it's lovely to see. Um, and I don't he scored against us, didn't he? He did, yeah. This this was the game against us. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to let us click on it because it was a friendly. It doesn't log it properly. No, it's mm -hmm. not. Um, but yeah, was he the one who scored the winner? I think it was the first one. I think it was the first one. Yeah, there you go. He scored in 15 minutes. Mm. He got the first one. So yeah, so I mean that's even more impressive. He didn't. He's not the one that scored. 
because we were a man down. He was the one that scored, you know, early on, 11 versus 11. So it's interesting. Um, there's not, I don't want to dig too much more on this. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see how it progresses today, like today, tomorrow. Um, it does seem like this is, this is going forward quite quickly though. So like, like we said, we, we've been busy working and Paul's been in London. So if this gains more traction and it's, it's nearly confirmed or going to be confirmed or is confirmed, uh, we'll do like a much, much bigger deep dive similarly to what we did with Botman. So, um, yeah. But let's not get excited yet, just in case, because we've all been let down a few times this window. So we'll we'll wait and see before we uh, before we get too excited. Well, yeah, I mean, but he, he, I think he'd be a quality signing, Alex. If I'm honest, I think as soon as he got linked, um, the the question for me is, you know, Benfica, they've lost Nunes, of course, in the summer. You know, and they've got the potential now to lose Ramos as well. That's going to screw them up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I I'd be lying if I say I know the the, the squad depth of Benfica at the moment in attacking mm. areas. I don't. I know they picked up David Neres, who obviously had some Ukrainian ish. You know, he he yeah. was there and he's not there anymore. So they they've they've recruited some. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what they've done with the Nunez money, or if they've spent some of it yet, or or, or not yet. I, I, mm. I'm going to have to again. That's something that if this progresses, we'll have to go and really dig into. Absolutely. Um, I was just trying to focus early doors on relevant information to get out to you guys, which is, you know, how's his recent form? Where does he play? How could he fit in? Um, and it looks like he's a, he's a proper striker. So it looks like he would mo more likely than not play um, as a nine or, or mm -hmm. where Wilson plays. I, I'd have to go into a, a bit more depth just to see if he could play out wide in a three. Um, I'd have to go back and look at each individual match and check highlights. So it's possible that he can, but not from what I've seen so far, which is not a lot. So, um, but I, I love this. I think this is great. We need to bring the average age down of a lot of the parts of the squad. We did it with the defense. Um, yeah. And now, you know, we've got two strikers over 30. Having one, bringing one that's 21 would be brilliant. But that was the whole point in Ekatike and all of that. Yeah. We need to try and have some youth rotation options who are at the same quality or, or can become, you know, better quality. It so does excite I, I, me. Him. Yes. He, he's one of those players that that does excite me and think, yeah, you know, th this guy, absolute quality, could become a, a major hit. Um, of course, you know, we have to remember that Callum Wilson's there. Um, and I, I think he would still be behind Callum Wilson when it came to, to, you know, first on the team sheet. But the fact that he's 21, you know, it, it, that's the big thing for me. Um, and it, like you say, it's, it's so good to see Newcastle going for these younger players um, with an aim to sort of, you know, for the future and to build these players up into, you know, quality footballers for our football side, not just to sell on, you know, which we've had in the past. Um, you know, they want to buy these players for the benefit of the team and the future of the team. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the kind of thing that if it doesn't work out and we want to go a different direction, we have sell on value. So this is, this is a prime example with Manchester City. Um, if they want to, go in a different direction. They can still get a reasonable transfer fee when they move players on. You know, looking at Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus and Bernardo Silva, if he goes, mm -hmm. they get transfer fees because the players are good enough. Um, so it'd be nice if we're in that position. You know, if we've got somebody who's good quality, but we don't quite, you know, maybe we want a change of system or we want to go in a different way. Yeah. Um, means we can actually get some money and start operating as, a, as, a, as an efficient football club instead of just having just assets that we just can't move because they're just mm. not good enough for the level they're in and they're not good enough for the wages they're on. And it's just, just poor. It's just yeah. from somebody who's supposedly such a good businessman in Mike Ashley, it's such poor business. It makes no sense. So, mm. but that's by the by, hopefully we're, we're progressing from that now. Uh, interesting comment from G saying we wish we were, he wishes that we get somebody through the door instead of just being linked with players. Uh, it takes time. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, if we if we go in for a certain player uh, and that gets rejected, uh, they've got to then um, just compose themselves, go back in for another player or spend a bit of time negotiating with that team on the certain player that we, we're going in for. It's 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 not as easy uh, as just sort of, a, you know, going in, putting a bid in, signing a player and he's there the next day. Sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes that has happened, of course. Um, but at, at the minute, it's very, you know, it, it's tough out there. It's a tough market when we're 
now going against some of the, the the best teams in the world for players. You know, we're not we're not shopping alongside the you know the lower league teams anymore. We're shopping alongside the big boys. And you know, uh, by the way, the Loch Ness top by uh, guys um, is for tonight's show. So you know, if if you watch tonight, then you can comment. But uh, nobody's going into the hat from the comments today. It's tonight. So uh, just to let you know that, guys. Um, Stephen says uh, the people on Twitter are moaning about the window so far. Uh, hello, we've signed a right back who was brilliant at the end of last season, an England goalie and a Rolls Royce of a centre half. Get a grip. Uh, Colin says loan for Pulisic is a good option. Um, Joel says I have a feeling how he's happy with what we've got. Uh, I don't think he is, Trolls. I don't think he is. I think he, he realises that we need a couple more through the door. He said uh, it in interviews. He, yeah, like, he has. Several times. <clears throat> He's not a stupid man. He knows what he's doing. He knows where we need improvements. Uh, Maggot says, uh, Lucas Moura and Raul Thomas, for me, uh, we don't have a lot of time to sign someone. It can take a week or more to try and get a player signed. Uh, yeah. Good thing which we've is got what more than a week. Then. But we've got more than a week, and sometimes it happens a lot quicker. We just, let's just, what, what, what all we can do is watch how this plays out. Uh, and then, of course, transfer deadline day, we'll be live all day. Uh, big day coming up for that as well. Um, so, you know, we'll be glued to whatever we're watching on deadline day uh, because I'm sure we'll still be linked with players. So it's going to be a very interesting day. Uh, Spacebar says, for once, we are trying to look for the right players to add and not just wants to bulk the squad up a bit. I agree with that. Uh, Isak doing the rounds again, says Keith. Yeah, he's come up again today. I don't know if you've seen the links. I, 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 I haven't seen the link today. Around. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm not sure on him, man. I really may not. or may not. It, it's basically Bamba Dieng. Um and um oh god brain freeze and uh, Gonzalo or Gon- Gonzalo I think it is Ramos yeah. from Benfica and Isak has come back into the conversation as well so that's that's three strikers that are all you know, three young strikers that have all just come straight back into the hat that weren't there to be discussed literally we did Monday's transfer show and then as soon as the camera went off every, we've just been linked with everybody it's it's exploded yeah. um. It's Which bonkers. it's bound to do come towards the end of the uh, at the end of the window. It will take off, um, no doubt about that. Uh, Trill says I'm not complaining, just a bit nervy. Yeah, I think we all are. We all, we all just want to see the signings come through the door, mate. To be honest, um, you know, we, we still live in hope, and and that's what that's all we've got at the moment. Just hope that we do sign a couple more players, and I'm sure it will happen. I'm, I, I I can't imagine us not bringing anybody else in because I think Eddie Howe is aware. Um, you know, of, of where we need to improve. Uh, Johnny Ola, thank you for your £5 super chat. He says, uh, given the Napoli owner's comment, what are your views on signing African Nation Cup players? I haven't seen the haven't comments. Seen comments. Uh, I'll have a look at them and get back to you on the show tonight because uh, I really haven't seen them comments, to be honest. Um, yeah, Pen. Uh, Peters, we are just sitting in dreamland. Every Everyone who we've approached, other than Botman, have gone for another team. Uh, can I can I respond to that? So that yes, I, I'm, indeed. So this is this is something I've said. I've said this a couple of times in the last week. People have to understand. Pe- people who are complaining specifically like that have to understand that we're trying to attract players at sort of Champions League level, or or who can quite quickly grow to that level. And mm-hmm. we can't offer any European football. None. We, un- we can't offer Conference League. There are teams trying to circumnavigate that, like Aston Villa, who are throwing one and a half times to two times the wages that we're that we're offering, which it could work for them. It might not. It might blow up in their faces and they might have financial trouble. That they might have an Everton situation in two or three years. They don't want that. That this is a gamble. So we're going, we're finding a middle ground between those two things because we don't Absolutely. want to try and throw wages and we mm-hmm. can't offer the European football. We can't yep. do, you know, as crap as Man United are, they can still offer some form of European football to their players and get extra matches, extra minutes. Yep. Yep. Um, so we're trying to do a middle ground um, and it's hard and we've got to be tough with it. Um, otherwise, we, you know, as soon as we try and um, just give up and throw money at somebody, every single signing thereafter is going to be more expensive and more tri- and more tricky. And then everybody we've currently got is going to be like, oh, well, you broke the wage structure now. And, and then there could be five, six, seven, eight players that will want to pay rise next summer. And it it could get very messy very quickly. So they're, they're doing it in a very careful way. 
just because it's not you know it's not a video game it's real life and they're mm. doing it the, the not the sort of they're not doing it the villa gambly way which you know may or may not work so well, yeah that's <clears throat> the way the way it started i don't think it is going to work but uh, time will tell on that one uh, the Napoli owner has a good point. If we sign loads of Brazilians um, when they're away in South American tournament, we are dreadfully short. That is true. But, yeah, but isn't the South American one, doesn't that happen at the same time as the Euros? Is that not a summer tournament? I believe I'm sure so. it's the African Nations that's on in, in, in sort of during the season. The yeah, South American one is the, um, oh, what's the South? I can't remember. Um, Copa. It's something like that, yeah. It, 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 one. No, it's it's right. Like that, but, um, but it is that I'm sure that is a, an end of season tournament, just like ours. It's the African Nations. I'm sure uh, that is the, the one during the season. So the Brazilians, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect. Uh, Riches, do you think there's any legs in the Camel Camaladine Sulemana link? Uh, that has surfaced a couple of times, and he does look interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Unfortunately, no. Uh, Keith says we just don't want another Chris Wood panic signing. <laughs> yes, I'd 100% agree with that. Mark says, Come on, guys, we hardly got any players in for 14 years under Cashley. Uh, just think what our owners are doing now. Uh, Johnny says, I would say the best signing we've made so far is Dan Ashworth. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people have said that. Steven says, 33 million plus add ons for Paqueta is a bargain in my eyes. Uh, Pete says, I fully agree with your reply, mate. However, these players will have first team football almost guaranteed. Going to Champions League teams, they probably won't be first class for them. Uh, maybe I mean, it depends who they it depends who the player is and who they go to. If you get a if you get a very high caliber or highly rated centre back, go to Tottenham, mm. they're going to start ahead of Eric Dyer, aren't they? So it depends. Well, context. you say that, but yeah. I heard somebody commenting on Eric, a Tottenham fan on the radio the other day, commenting on Eric Dyer, saying that he seems to be first on the on the uh, team sheet for yeah, Conte, he, and he's dramatically he's, um, improved. When he's on, he's on, and he's good in a three. He just has a bit of Phil Jones about him that sometimes yeah. he's just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he gets mm. own goals. He just things go wrong. Sometimes he falls asleep, um, and it's man it's certain managers' fault for trying to play him in a back four from certain times. He has to play in a back three because he's yeah. a, you know, just just what he is. Yeah, it's the Copper America uh, that the player, and it is played in the summer. I, I knew it was. Uh, it, it, so it wouldn't affect the Brazilian players at all. William says, uh, yes, uh, be like Villa, throw money at players and lose your opener to Bournemouth. Yeah. Well, there you go. Says it all, really. Uh, Tom says, yes, Copa America, and it's held during our summer. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, Paul says, look at Hudson Adoy on 130k a week. It's dangerous rising wages. Um, the only reason he's on that is because they... The, uh, Bayern Munich tried to buy him a few years, like 18 months ago or two years mm -hmm. ago when he looked like he was going to be an absolute monster um, and they put that there were rumors of like 25 million bids. So Chelsea, you know, had to do that to keep him. Um, but they, they they wouldn't have predicted that all that they would have so much managerial sort of issues and turnover of players. It was probably the right decision at the time. What were they going to do? Let him go to buy in for, for that. Yeah. Um, Free Friday Jesus Cup of America is a tournament that starts in late January, ends in uh, end of February. No, it's not. That's the African nations, mate. You're getting mixed up. Uh, it, it's not because the uh, Cup of America is in our summer end of season tournament. Uh, so, guys, on the basis you've seen appear in the news and not in the know, uh, would you sign up to three players? Listen, I think we'd sign as many as we can. You know, if, if we have the opportunity to sign three players, then they'll sign three players. If, if that opportunity is there, However, it all depends on if Eddie Howe thinks we need three players just to strengthen the squad. Um, two for me would be uh, the probability. Um, the fact that we, we're probably still looking at a right-sided player or an attacking midfielder and a striker. Um, so those would be the ones for me. Right, next uh, we have Lucas Paqueta. Yeah, I mean, we might as well have a look at him again and see how he's been getting on lately. Um, still absolutely outrageous. His statistical matches are, are pretty bonkers. <coughs> Excuse me, with Ziyech and, and Marco Royce and Kizzy Komen, even Thomas Muller in there. It's just, it's outrageous. Mm. Um, Alder Green, so if he would play as a, as a right-sided eight or slightly wider or, or anywhere as a 10, 
Similarly to, to what we've been talking about, James Madison, obviously the difference being is that Paqueta is still left-footed, <clears throat> but not even 25 yet. So statistically, absolutely disgusting. His defensive statistics are incredible. Um, at, well, 23 pressures per 90. That That is already up there with what our midfielders are producing. Eddie Howe has, has got our, our, our lads running very, very well. So Willock yeah. and Longstaff's pressures have... Yeah really really gone up i think they're both at 24 plus um so even higher than than paquetta's but pa- paquetta wouldn't need there would be no needing to eddie how him he's already well past that well beyond that his qualities are just ridiculous so his defensive contributions here with tackles and pressures are very very invaluable um receives the ball very high up because he does he does like to play as sort of the the furthest forward midfielder not as much of a ball carrier from from deep Although he tends to carry the ball once he's a little bit higher. He receives it high and then carries it high. So it's not quite logged properly here, as we've talked about before. Um, shot volume, really, really, really nice. Three three shots per game from a midfielder is lovely. We want to try and pepper the goal a bit more, like we did against Forest. 23 shots, we just need to be a bit more clinical with them. Yep. Shot creating actions as well as nearly four. So he's creating four shots for other teammates every game. which is mm-hmm. which, So he's having three of his own and creating four for others. That's seven shots just from him existing. Um, Unbelievable, which is great. Seven shots is 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 a large amount. You know, if that can yeah. be transferred to the Premier League, that you know, generally you're going to get goals from that. Uh, so, if we want to, sh- if we want to actually have a look at interesting things, uh, have a look at things that I like about him in his passing statistics. We have, uh, uh, where is it? It should be under here. Where's passes under pressure? Am I blind? Have they have they moved passes under pressure? Oh no, it's in pass types. There we go. Passes under pressure. This lovely stat here. So passes oh. made while under pressure from an opponent, eleven point six per ninety, which is in the ninety ninth percentile in Europe's big five leagues. So again, it's it's as we try and become a dominant possession team. You know, high press, quick in transition, and then dominate. Um, he he's just cool as a cucumber, same as Bruno is. A lot of people are watching Bruno, and he just he it doesn't matter if there's two or three around him. He'll shield. He'll pick his pass. He won't panic. Paqueta is 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 stronger than Bruno. He's bigger, and he's got the same skill set. He he is able to just he just doesn't care. He's just got that quality. So that is that is an inv- invaluable you know thing that he's got. Um and just yeah, just ridiculous. I mean, so that's yeah, yeah. over score. He's just um, an unbelievable player, isn't he? So they've just played their first game of the season. So we'll have a look at how he got on. Uh, they actually won 2-1, even though their goalkeeper got sent off. Um, so they had to play the second half a man down. Mm. Uh, and they still managed to win. Uh, and Paqueta's role changed slightly because of that. So his heat map's gone very left-sided. Um, but played 75 minutes. But it's such a clean, a clean run with... 47 out of 53 passes. So as somebody who's quite in a, who's wearing the number 10 shirt to have that uh, 89% passing accuracy is quite tidy. 67 touches, he's on the ball quite a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. And 67 touches is a lot considering his team are a, a man down for half this game. Uh, five out of seven long balls and a cross and a key pass. He's, he's contributing creatively, um, getting the ball in the right areas. Um, and then duels as well. 4.4 uh, 4 out of 4 aerial duels. So everybody who watches the show consistently knows that I whinge about Willock being very poor at aerial duels and it's something he needs to improve in his game. Um Piquet Piquet's fine. He can do it right now. Um he doesn't need to improve it. It's it's he's already a little bit taller than sort of a Bruno. Um it it's just far more weapons for us. Um and contributes with a, with a couple of tackles. But just such a such a tidy, clean game from from them mm. when they've gone down down a man. Apparently, they were down to ten men as well. The opposition, Alex. Jordy two well, for life says he watched the game. Uh, well, yeah. So when did, when did that red card happen? Then? That, that came was, before that before killing. Leon's. So right, so they got a, they got a so they they lost their goalkeeper twenty seven minutes in, and then um, the other team oh, yeah, lost yeah. lost a yeah. player before half time. So. Even even so, that yeah, okay. So it wasn't quite as drastic as I as I pointed out, but they still had to play, you know, for fifteen minutes a man Indeed. down. 
But, but you know, when you go down to ten men, you're always going to, you know, some players are going to change position anyway, aren't they? You know, just to uh, suit the tactics of the team. Oh, hang on, let me go back. So I will just show you his output as well for for any new people and people who who aren't sure. Oh God, there we go. Ah, why is it scrolled down? So Leon. Uh, yeah, there we go. So Leon from last season, the season that's just finished, uh, nine goals, six assists. So 15 goal contributions for him last season in 2,700 minutes. Um, again, I always use this for context because it's easy for people to visualize. Maxi got 2,800 minutes. So he's, he played 100 fewer minutes than Maxi and got an additional five goal contributions um, from slightly deeper a slightly yep. deeper role as well. Mm -hmm. um, and he got 14 the year before that. So he's he's there or thereabouts, 15 goal contributions, two years on the trot. He's used to being in and around the goals. Um, and he's very, very good in, in a sort of a dominant team. He would he's, be perfect. He, he's brilliant, isn't he? I mean, he's a, he's he really a different is. player to Madison, but he would also be perfect. It'd just be a different style. I mean, I said the other day I'd rather take Madison, but when you when you look at this, when you look at Paquetta's stats, you kind of think, you know, especially you know similar players, the, the players that are in that list. I mean, this guy is a special player, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, Billy mentioned it, and I do agree with him. Madison is Premier League proven, and mm -hmm. let's not forget Madison got twenty goal contributions in the in the Prem, and Paquetta got fewer than that in in arguably an easier division. Um, so. <laughs> They're, they're different players. Madison yeah. is, is an exceptional talent, but Paqueta is, is good at different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would bring different things with his left foot, with his you know companionship and partnership potentially with Bruno and Joe Linton. Yeah, um, yeah. It would it would be quite skillful and creative. <sighs> yeah. I, I I don't really mind. I, I would no, be I really I would be yes. ecstatic if we got either of the two of them because yeah. they're both incredible yeah. footballers. So. I said that the other night. Um, you know, when when we were talking about it, you know, Either one of them would do me. Both would be fantastic, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but either one, um, I think would it would be incredible. The excitement amongst the fan base for one would be just through the roof uh, to get. I mean, Paqueta, we all know he's Bruno's best mate, and uh, what he could, you know, three, having three Brazilians in the midfield um, that would excite anybody, uh, especially the quality that we'd have in there. So. Um, it's an interesting one. I mean, we've been, the price has been banded around a few times, um, you know, like 33 million, et cetera. And, you know, it has come down. There's no doubt about that his price has come down during the summer as to, to what it was first uh, advertised at. Um, do you think that's more media or do you think that, you know, who gave the price out originally? Or do you think, you know, Leon have admitted that maybe the price was a little bit high early doors? Or does nobody um, simply know? Well, I mean, it's it's logical that his transfer fee should be lower than it was in January because he's got six months, you know, fewer yep. re months remaining on his contract. So, um, and and yeah, there, there were reports earlier on in the in the window, or even towards the end of the season, that he wanted out. They wanted him out. You know, there was an understanding that he was going to go. Not necessarily to us, but that he was just going to go. That that was that was a decision that had been made, um, but we don't know how true that is. Yeah, he's, you know he's played in the first game of the season, so I, I think they will have to drop their asking price slightly because I think people are reluctant to pay kind of over sixty. Yeah. You know, especially with, with Madison. Sort of, it seems to be like to get Madison, it'd be between fifty and sixty. So. To pay over sixty for Paqueta definitely feels like an over, an overspend. Um, considering considering he's not, you know, Premiership proven. Um, so I, it's definitely got. I, I think thirty three sounds. I, I think if we're getting for thirty three, that's an absolute steal. <laughs> it um, is. Yeah, for me, that's. I just... expect it to be more. I, like, I'd be surprised if he goes. I'd be surprised him to go for any less than forty five to anybody. Um, mm. It's Maybe just, the 33 amazing. is what Leon want up front and the rest in add-ons. You know, you just have to... Uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Douglas says, will we lose all of them during the Copa America? No, because that's a summer tournament, maybe. Um, 20 million less than Madison is a no-brainer. Uh, Rujan says, even without Paqueta, we have great team this season, more entertaining than last season. Uh, I am not worried at all. 
Jordan wants to know if they put an offer in yet. Not as we, not as far as we know. We haven't heard anything. Uh, Spacebar says it's definitely the quality we are looking for and that creative spark that would take us further. Uh, Jordy Tune for Life, we can't complain if we get either player. The improve was massively, no question about that. Uh, Kenzie says, is there any concrete on if the club is even interested in Paqueta? Well, I think there's a lot of links from various sources now uh, saying mm-hmm. that we are linked to a Paqueta, which is why we first mentioned it the other day. Um, yeah, there were three of it, There were three journalists um, basically put the reports out. So it's from it's from verified journalists. So it's not just random links anymore from random Twitter accounts. It's pr- proper yeah. journalists. So we can talk about it with a bit more substance. It's still, mm. still, you know, not sure, but time will tell. Uh, Amazon about Man City wanting Paqueta as well. Look, we, we know Man City have been in. It just depends what happens with Bernardo Silva because God knows what's happening with Barcelona. They seem to be able to sign players, but they can't register them. So <clears throat> Barcelona may sign players and then they can't register them and lose them on free transfers. Uh, which is the most bizarre scenario I've ever seen. Um, you know, there was two players that they've signed in the summer, one of them being the uh, centre-back Christensen from Chelsea. They haven't registered him yet. Uh, so if they don't, he's available on a free. It's yeah, the most bizarre thing. Rumors, yeah, there were a few articles popping around yesterday about how that they could lose them in the same summer they got them because of all of this. It's it's crazy. It is. And they shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Uh, Paul says, surely next season we need a Brazilian colour strip. Paqueta would be great, but Madison equally so, in my opinion. Uh, Yucateru says, uh, didn't Gonzalo Ramos score against us in the Benfica preseason? He did. He scored the first goal for them. Mm-hmm. Wayne says, Paqueta and Bruno are best mates. You don't get that in your side very often. Uh, good that we missed out on both Shesko and Werner. Uh, both pretty cheap for what we've been looking for. Yeah, well, with the Sheshko deal, there's something dodgy going on at Red Bull, which needs inquiring about, in my opinion. Uh, absolute bollocks. Uh, FIFA says, uh, Paul, you look in Europe, there's not one team full of Brazilian midfields. Uh, we need to just look for hardworking uh, players. Look at City, Liverpool, they find top talents, not just sign players' friends. Uh, uh, listen, uh, have, did you just see the stats on Paqueta? You know, st- one thing about stats is they don't bloody lie. This guy, if he's wanted by Manchester City as well, who you've just quoted in that very, very sentence there, City are after him as well. So that proves he is, to me, the quality is there. You know, it there's no sense. doubt about it. It's because he's in, we're potentially looking for another midfielder, possibly an upgrade on Longstaff and Willock in that, in that right side of eight and a, a, somebody who can play out on the right wing, it, it fits. It's not just a run. It's not being shoehorned. It make it makes logical sense positionally and tactically as well. It's if, 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 if Botman's best friend was a left-sided center back. Yeah. I'd say I'd agree with you because we've just got Botman and that would be ridiculous. So we wouldn't need anybody else, yeah. but Paqueta would be a, an enormous upgrade on anybody who plays on the right wing for us. And anybody who plays Absolutely. In, in the right eight for us, so one hundred percent, no doubt about it. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Um, and UFC Games YouTube says uh, thoughts on Ramos. We spoke, uh, we spoke about him earlier in the show. If you want to go back and watch that, he was first up on our list. Uh, definitely somebody we want. Um, of course, the Tranmere game in the Carabao Cup is live on Sky Sports seven forty five on Wednesday, the twenty fourth of August. Um, of course, we will be doing a live watch along for that as well. So uh, it'll be on this channel so you can turn the biased commentary off who will be wanting to try and make a win, of course, and uh, listen to myself uh, as it's an away game. I'll be doing the commentary for that and watch it on the telly. doesn't get better than that. Uh, Jax is nice to have lots of possession last Saturday. We won't enjoy that again until we play Tranmere and then Palace at home. Um, Veen says, do you, think, uh, do you guys think it is fair to criticise the business if we do not sign anyone else? Depends on the context. Like, yeah, if we put it's... bids in for these kinds of people, and it all goes, you know, it all goes right. It depends. If if we've if we've if they've been seen to have been trying and things have just gone wrong, it, it really just depends. Surely. Yeah. One thing there's not though. There's no guarantees in football, and that's just the way it's always been. Uh, Maggot says maybe the Paquetta deal is done, and they just announced it on the final deadline or hour uh, for the drama. 
well, I, mm, <laughs> I think we'll just want him in and done. Uh, Jordy Two for Life says, uh, we wanted the club to be quiet on who they are after, and that's exactly what they're doing. Personally, I think it's so professional of the club. Uh, Gary says, you keep saying not Premier League proven, but look how Bruno turned out. Yeah, it's a good point. It is a very good point. Bruno, uh, but he was he, obviously he was slowly integrated into it, but he did take it like it to a duck the water, which proves his, how good of a player Bruno actually is. Um, he, he loves the Premier League. He loves the way the football is played in the Premier League. That is clear. And maybe Piquet can do the same. Uh, you know, there's no he, reason. It seems like he's got the physical attributes to do that, definitely, and the, yeah. and the stamina for late game. You know, high intensity. And for for people talking about this whole Prem proven thing. Mm. Every player who moves to the Premier League says the same thing. Who, who's who's yet to play in it? They all talk about how it's it's a higher level of intensity for the ninety minute period, as well as a, possibly a bit more physicality. Which is it's not all about the physicality. That's that's overstated how much that that is. It's more about it's just more about the intensity. This is why we get so much late drama in um, in the Premier League. We get we get three ones turn into three threes, and we get comebacks and it happens yeah. far more in the Premier League because of because of the just the intensity and the fitness and the determination. Yeah. It's what the league's famous for. Absolutely. And that's why people want to come and play in the Premier League. That's why Botman yeah. wanted to come and play here. It's because it it's not, you know, it's not just it's not just a random lie. It's all the players say it. Mm-hmm. Uh Samsonite Dave says I'm worried if Wilson gets injured and we have wood and that's it. Paquetta Madison et al are luxuries, but some sort of backup on Wilson is a must. Um, Shakira says, I hope Barca loses all of them. Can't stand teams that try to cheat their players out of money, i.e. De Jong as well, have fans so poor they boo players that help them bail them out, i.e. Braithwaite. Uh, yeah, Braithwaite had a really, really tough time, um, and it was very unfairly threat. But, you know, what do you expect from the, you know, the, Barca are just out of the shop. They're just like Man United at the minute, they're just all over the place. Uh, JT Dunk says, those stats for Paqueta, man. Wow. Uh, if we can get this done, we would have an incredible midfield trio with him in the final third. Bruno and Joe mixing it up behind him. Uh, we'd be a real force. Keith says, like Billy said last week, Madison could be a smokescreen for Lucas Paqueta. I agree with Big Bill 101%. Um, Yucatero says, uh, Paqueta is amazing. Would love to have him in that forward midfield position. Uh, Nagelsmann thinks Barcelona will get bankrupt in two years. It wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, if City are after him, then he'd go to Chelsea for 80 million. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean says bloody FFP is really hampering us. Look, we're just being careful with regards to FFP, aren't we? Um, you know, just when we put an offer in for players, obviously we want to, you know, pay these players off over a certain amount of time, which covers our backs for FFP rather than go out and spend, you know, 60, 70 million straight off the bat. It's not, it's not hampering us. We, we could, we could do a lot more than we are, it, but if it if it goes wrong, then we've got no no room to manoeuvre. It it is risky. If if we go and spend a lot of money and and inflate everything right now, and and th- and we get three or four wrong, not just wood. If we get a lot more wrong because we've rushed it and because we've thrown money at things, mm-hmm. then it, it might be difficult to solve because of restrictions. It doesn't matter if we've got the money if if we if it's FFP restricting us. If we've messed it up, then we're not going. It's going to be hard to come back from that. We're going to, you know, Everton are going to have to, you know, what well, I can't even remember what the bloody metaphor is. Um, they're just going to have to put up with it for a few years while they get their house in order before they can then put money back in and try and push where they were originally tr- originally trying to push for, which was to break into the top six. That was what they've been trying to do for the last couple of years with Ancelotti and having you know uh, Jaimez in, and it, it, that they they looked okay for a, for a period. We don't want to end up like that. So, you know, uh, it's, we're just being careful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, next player is Tangai Ndombele. Yeah, so there, there are a few reports that we he, he's been offered to us or, or something, but Eddie Howe's not keen. I don't mm. know how people would know this. or but This is journalists saying this, so I, I don't know where they've got this from. Um but he's linked, so we can have a look. Uh, he does seem to be not very, not very well liked by by Premier League watchers or Tottenham watchers and stuff. Um, but he is absolutely ridiculous. He, he, you know, he was doing what Bruno was doing 
before Bruno. Um, he was very good in France before he came to the Premier League. And he, he got a few injuries, he had fitness concerns, and he just wasn't able to, to do it uh, on a consistent basis. But, I mean, he's still peak age as well. He's 25 and a half. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, we can dig a little bit more. Five foot 11 as well. So he's he, he's he's not an absolute, he's not a Joe Linton, but he, he's sort of a Willock kind of size uh, yep. for context. And then statistically... This is what this is what I'm talking about. People, people sort of maybe watch match of the day and they think, oh, Dembele's missing again, or he's he's had a quiet game. Um, for what he actually does, he's one of those underrated players um, yeah. who does so much for the team, but it goes understated. Very much like um, if people remember Musa Dembele for Tottenham in midfield a few years ago, um, who was very kind of nobody raved about him, and and then since then people in hindsight have looked back and sort of thought, oh my God, he just kept things ticking over so well in that midfield. He was a beast. Yeah. He was pre he was a press-resistant machine. Um, and Dembele is is similar to a level. Um, progressive carries is is outrageous. Anything sort of close to 10 is is elite and he's at, he's at eight. Uh, dribbles completed as well is in the 99th percentile for a midfielder. So when he, when he walks with the ball, he he's going with the ball. You're not you're not going to get it off him very often. He's if he, he wants to do it, he wants to do it. Um, good at progressing the ball via passing as well. To be fair, despite only having a few goals, um, his output's actually quite reasonable. His per ninety, uh, he just doesn't play that much. He's, he he went to so for people who don't know where he's been when we signed Bruno in January, um, Leon bought Favre and they got. Ndombele on loan to try and fill all the holes basically so Ndombele came in as cover and ended up being um, not even a starter he ended up coming on as a sub which was you know concerning but but I, I still think he's a really good player and I think he could do a really good job uh, I wouldn't prioritise this over some of our other no, links I was going to say that I don't think he'd be a, the, the, the prior, top of the list priority but you know the times I've seen in Don Belly play and there's quite a few times I've been impressed with what I've seen um, I just think that you know the, the way Tottenham play not so much not so much his game if you, you see what I mean I mean Mourinho loved the guy um, I mean you can you know, see so it from the stat matches how he plays the fact that his stat matches are Kovacic, Kante, and Bruno is there in eighth. Mm -hmm. He plays in that fashion. I don't. He's not as good at his um, quite as good at his ball recoveries as Bruno is. And Bruno is yep. an exceptional talent. But but Endombele does much of the same, just in a slightly different way. And he, you know, the fact that he's matched with those three. We talked about this before Bruno came. How Bruno was matching with Kovacic and Kante, and we yep. can see that on the pitch we can see him playing and there's bits of Kante and his sort of movement yep. and there's um yeah I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if he came I'd be really excited because I think mm -hmm. I think this guy's just begging for a manager to believe in him and trust him and I think he could be incredible incredible again I, I think he's a great player he's just been a bit he's been quite injured and mis mismanaged or misused for for two or three seasons yeah. um but I wouldn't prioritize this over sort of strikers and Paqueta Madison wingers. I think, you know, it, this, the Shelby injury has confused everyone a little bit. Where yeah, we, we're we going to go. Thing, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. We've got a Shelby is out for, well, till after the world cup now. So, you know, yeah. do we look at somebody to cover that position? Um, what would, what would he set us back? Do you think Alex, I mean, what, what kind of figures are we talking for him or would they possibly look to loan him in first? That is a cracking question. I mean, I'm not sure how long is left on his uh, transfer, uh, on his transfer, on his contract. We, we can have a check. Um, so, I mean, he they bought him for fifty four million. That was a big, big fee. Yeah, big fee. Um, and then th when they loaned him to Leon in January, uh, they did actually. Um, he did have an option. They, they had an option to buy for fifty odd as well. Obviously, they didn't trigger it. Because uh, they barely played him, and on ballet. Um, uh, there he is, twenty-seven million market value on this website. Interesting. Uh, so he is. The contract expires June twenty twenty-five. So he's got three years left on his contract. Yeah, he got a big contract. Um, so bloody hell, he he must have signed a he signed a six-year deal. That is a fat contract. 
Um, well, he, he did say he did come to Tottenham with so, so you know, he was expected to be there, one of their main big guys, you know, big play for them. Uh, and it, mm-hmm. it didn't quite, it, it, did, it hasn't worked out at Spurs really in the way that I think. Uh, a lot of Spurs fans were hoping, but obviously, you know, he's had some different managers in between that spell since he signed for them as well. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, so... I, I'm not sure about this because it's Daniel Levy as well, and exactly. the fact that the fact that they quoted Leon a 50 odd million to buy price in January, and it's only half the you know half a season on. Um, I don't think I think if we could get him for anywhere between 25 and 30, I think it would be good. But see, twenty five. I don't think twenty five would do it. I think Dan, Daniel Levy would tell us to go fish. I think he would want thirty five, forty. I think he'd try and yeah. Get as I mean, that's as what he's can. famous for. And I don't think I don't think he's he. It, this is a risky signing as well. I wouldn't want to pay thirty five, forty because it might not work. It might. It sounds great when I when I outlined how good he can be, but that yeah. might not work. He might not play well. So, ugh, it is risky. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's. It's he's a player I'd be interested in, um, but I, I think you're right what you say, Alex. I, I think when, when you go up against Daniel Levy, um, we've seen in the past, we, we all know what Levy's about. We all know that money is the big thing for him, and especially after Tottenham has splashed, let's say, let's be fair, a lot more money this summer than what they have in the past. They're going to want to recuperate some of that, and 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 Levy being the businessman he is, the tight ass that he is, let's be fair. He's going to want to get as much money as he can in for for and Don Belly, and I, I think you're right. I don't think 27 million is going to touch the sides. I think you yeah. want you want a lot more than that. Which I think they'd laugh us out of the room with that as an opening bid. To yeah, be fair. which may put Newcastle off if 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 certainly the, the the fee goes, you know, like you were saying, 30, 35, and upwards. I, I don't unless think a loan is is on the table, which yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, Facebook uses Alex speaks very well and specifically when he reasons with comments, uh, calm, measured and backed up by facts. Paul is also a great, calm, respectful host. Love this. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So on on Dumbele, on Dumbele uh, I think, you know, I wouldn't be disappointed if we signed him. But obviously, I think the transfer fee is going to be a major sticking point for anybody that tries to deal with him. Not just Newcastle. I think Levy will want the money back for him. Uh, and get as much money as he can, it possibly can. Um, uh, and this is a uh, wrong character for me and Dombele. Uh, we don't uh, listen, we, we don't truly know what kind of character he is. Uh, Reaxi says, uh, great if we get Madison Paqueta because we need one or more creative players of Bruno's standards. Uh, I've heard Benfica wanted 30 million euros for uh, for Ramos. Look, I think. He'd probably be about that. I, I, I don't, I, you know, certainly no more. Uh, Jordy Toon for Life says he's not training with the first team along with Winks and two others training by themselves. Yeah, he, he, look, it's clear to see Conte doesn't want him. He's not part of Conte's plans at all at Tottenham. Um, so if he wants to continue playing football and regular first team football, you know, somebody like Newcastle, it's a good project for him to come to. That's for certain. And a club with ambition uh, and, he could be a part of it. You know, that's how you sell the club to these players. Do they want to be a part of, of the ambition of the football club and, and the growing? Um, yes, Alex, that's a good idea. Um, you know, the, growing the football club is is what it's all about for these players coming in. We have to sell it, Alex. We have to sell these players what we are going to be doing in the future. Well, yeah, I mean, it's what I said. It's what I said earlier. It, it, we're we're having to try and explain that we're we're not doing what Everton have just tried and failed. We're not doing what Aston Villa are currently trying to do, mm. and and trying to penetrate that that top six. We're we're trying to go one beyond that and smash it out of the park. We're we're trying to as 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 carefully but quickly as we can challenge for trophies, like big trophies, not just. A Carabao Cup, even though it'd be lovely to win it, um, you know, league titles and be consistently in the Champions League and challenging. I think that's 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 where they want to be. So it's a bit different. The, the project is, is, you know, the the ceiling is a lot higher. Yeah, uh, Ab says that was not usually this calm on a Thursday. Uh, well, he hasn't had his uh, evening raw meat yet for the the shorter night, so that that, that may change depending on what happens uh, on social media later on. If uh, if if you know. 
players are linked again and all players aren't linked and everything goes to, to pot again. But we'll see what happens before we do the preview show. Um, right, we've got one more player to bring you, then we'll do some honourable mentions. Um, but just before I do that, guys, we've got over 960 watching, which is absolutely incredible for a tea time show. Thank you so much for everybody that has tuned in. Uh, we hope you're enjoying the content. We are working very, very hard to bring you the very best content on this channel. Uh, certainly not bullshit anybody uh, with anything. Uh, we're just talking about what these players could offer Newcastle United should the sign. Um, you know, we don't know anything for certain. We we don't know if players are actually officially linked. But if we see them in the media, we talk about them. Simple as that. Um, so if you are enjoying the show, please hit that like button for us. And also the subscribe button if you're new. Come and join the Toon Review family. A fantastic, fantastic bunch of um, uh, subscribers that we've got at the channel. So thank you very much. Come and join it. Um, why not? And if you want to donate to the channel as usual, you can hit that dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments. Uh, right, our final player tonight, or this afternoon, I should say, uh, before the honourable mentions, is Conor Gallagher. Now, this this player, Alex, um, if you'd asked me a year ago, I think he, he, I would have snapped, his, snapped your hands off to get Conor Gallagher. Now, he's gone on loan last season that he went to Palace, didn't he? And he had mixed reviews, it's fair to say. Um, I don't know if it was mixed reviews. I think he's, I think it's unfair for his age because he was, you know, 21 for yeah. large parts of that season. So I think what he did for his age is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, still quite raw. It depends, you know, th there's a lot of talk at the moment about certain players for Chelsea. hudson Adoy has been spoken about as, as has Conor Gallagher. And there's a lot of fringe players floating around on Chelsea's books that... Yeah. You know, yeah. are they going to get loaned out for minutes? Are they going to get sold? Are they going to get kept in the team for the season? And, and we're a bit unsure. But but Conor Gallagher's name has 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 cropped up in the last forty eight hours from from mm. various sources and and journalists and things. Um, uh, so it's worth a look. A comment there from Susan, by the way, uh, replying to Abs. Another short tonight. Alex hasn't had his tea yet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> carry on, mate. Carry on. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see by statistical similarities that he is similar to Joe, uh, well, Joe and Joe, Joe Linton and Joe Willock. So yeah. I, I was actually going to just mention Joe Willock. Um, and then I noticed that he's on that uh, table anyway. So yeah, yes. if we signed Gallagher, I would I would imagine he would play in a high eight role. Well, in, in the eight role, whether, whether it would be Joe Linton's side or Joe Willock's side, um, probably the right side. So we do have players... You know, is he an upgrade? I don't think he can do what Joe Linton can do. Is he better than Joe Willock? Uh, that kind of thing. I think I think he's more consistent than Joe Willock. I think Joe Willock on his day can be unplayable, but he doesn't have many of those days. Mm. Um, he showed glimpses of it at Forest where he was quite technical, getting some shots away, but then he was also quite lazy. Um, you know, yeah. and we saw like the goal against Leicester where he was just bombing it down the left wing. So when he when he wants to, he's he's very very good. Mm -hmm. um, but this would bring much of the same uh, in terms of just very good on the ball with his dribbles. He's very young. He really does remind me of when Ross Ross Barkley was very young. That when he gets the ball, his his objective is just like the goal's over there. I'm going that way. Just head mm -hmm. up, either drive the ball or play the pass. Always running around. I mean, his pressures is very very high as well. Um, always trying to take shots. Is it 50 million they were talking? I hadn't seen that. Yeah, I'd seen that before as well. Um, you know, make the point there of 50, 50 million quid. I mean, that, you know, I know he's a young kid, uh, but 50 million. I mean, again, it's it's an English player, Alex. You know, it, it... I, I don't think Joe Willock is that far behind him. To be fair, I think Gallagher is better than Willock at the moment. Yes. The problem is with Willock, Alex, but... as we've discussed this many, many times before, is consistency. You know, because one, one or two games, you'd be superb. You know, and it, it yeah. gives this impression, yeah. Willock. Um, I've said this for, for since he signed for the club. It gives that Chris Waddle impression. You know, when Chris Waddle used to, you know, be on the pitch, you think oh, he's got this lazy persona about him. But then when he gets the ball, he can he can do something with it. The the talent is there with Joe Willock for me. It's just the consistency that lets him down. Yeah, no, I I agree. Which is why I I if this was a loan or a, or a reasonably good fee, yeah, because it's a young English talent who can grow and be developed. 
I think this kind of play would thrive in an Eddie Howe team. When you, when you look at the pressures, when, when you look at where he spikes statistically, um, you know, lots of shot creating actions, at 1.64 shots per 90, lots of pressures. Um, he, he get lo- lots of touches in the attacking penalty a- area. He receives the ball very high up. Like it, it would work for for Eddie Howe. It seems like a very Eddie Howe kind of player. I mean, that's just that's just looking at him versus midfielders. If we swap to uh, attacking midfielders versus wingers, it depends. It, again, it depends where he's playing as. This this does him a bit dirty because he did play. He played in various positions for Palace. I think Palace changed formation halfway through the season as well. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, amazing talent. Yeah. Amazing age profile would, would improve the, the quality of the squad. Um, but if not for 50 million, if that's, no. if that, I don't know who's quoted that, but that's, that's mental. It's outrageous. Um, it's, it is outrageous. We, we, we've we got other priorities. The Chelsea manager stated last year when he went on loan to Palace that he, he, he had him in his plans, you know, for this season and onwards. Now, whether that comes to fruition or not, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, did was he involved against he came on or? He came on for one minute in the ni- 90th plus ninth minute he yeah. came on. So he played a minute. So I mean, that, you know. Well, so he, it, he came on for Jorginho. So I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't know whether he's going to play a part for, for Thomas Tuchel or not. I, I really don't know. Um, but... Again, like you said, someone on loan uh, or maybe 25, 30 million, but 50 is just incredible. It really is. It's, it's outrageous. Um, there's no way we'd pay that at all. We, we, we really wouldn't. We, we wouldn't pay that kind of money. Uh, not, not, for, not for Conor Gallagher. Um, Maggot says, the only thing about Willick is he looks like the stupid kid off Benidorm. I don't know. Uh, Gallagher's outstanding at Palace. Uh, Andrew says at work, just calling to say hi. Uh, Peter's hoping to get the right-hand side sorted and the striker before the window closes. Uh, will they let him go if Mount stays out of form? Uh, Is Mount out of form? Apparently. Uh, I don't think he's been that great, but Mason Mount's one of my favourite players. I think he's got a hell of a future. Um, he just needs to be managed the right way. Uh, Emma says, have you guys done a side-by-side comparison between Paquetta and Madison yet? Um, not specifically. I mean, we, we we've covered them it. both separately. Yeah, but... yeah. We, we might look at that in if, if it starts to heat up. Uh, my mate in Stoke started supporting Newcastle, but he thought it was Newcastle under Lyme. Yeah, don't do that, whatever you do. Foxy says, surprising that we continue to ignore Gabby Gull, uh, scoring big goals in big games recently as well. Lethal left foot. I haven't checked him for like two weeks. It's gone really, I mean, there's nothing on him. Absolutely nothing, to be fair. Because their season uh, started a couple of months ago, didn't it? We, yeah. we did check it, but that was a little while ago now. Uh, there's no no links, that's, that's certainly. No, there's not. Uh, Aston says uh, 50 million pound Gallagher is a Man United price it is um, very much so Larry says did you hear about Chelsea placing a bid for Orba yeah it looks like that's going to happen actually uh, there's somebody else as well linked with Chelsea Orba and somebody else I uh, can't remember who it is I heard it on the radio just as I was coming home before uh, Keith says uh, catch you all tonight I need to eat bloody belly thinks my throat has been cut thanks for the show Paul and Alex and all the mods uh, they want about 50 million for Gibbs White. What? Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. Jesus wept. Um, that's just mental. That is that is absolutely mental. Uh, right. Uh, honorable mentions just before we go, Alex. Uh, yeah, Bamba Dieng from Marseille, um, was, was quite strongly linked, and then the, the Gon- Gonzalo Ramos. Link is seems to be a lot stronger. It's come from Sky and Fabrizio Romano. So, but Bam, but, uh, what's his name again? Bamba Dieng. That's the yeah. one. Um, yeah, twenty-two year old Marseille striker uh, can play anywhere across the front line. He's reasonably good. We won't we won't go too crazy into it. But again, he's young. I think he was seven goals last year uh, in the league. Mm. Didn't play too many minutes. Good talent, young, uh, but. Uh, personally, out of the two, I, I I prefer Gonzalo Ramos at the moment from what I've seen of them. But if if the Bamba Dieng links get uh, stronger, then we will specifically like, go into detail and look at him specifically. Um, and then we also got linked with Lamptey as well. And we we all know that Lamptey is a very very good player, sort of shifted from a wing back 
fullback kind of into a bit more of a right winger I tell you in what, the last 12 to 18 months. That, that would excite me. Lamptey on the right hand side would excite me because we know yeah. we know he, he can score goals, he can cross the ball, uh, he's got incredible pace. Um, and I, it just linking up with uh, Trippy is just <laughs> that really would be some right hand side we'd have then. Absolutely incredible. It would indeed. Um, but he's a natural so, winger, lots of crosses yeah. to the ball. Bit different to the inverted stuff, but yeah, just the journalists are just pumping out names and names and names Madness and names. There's the more than what we've mentioned, but yeah, th- those are the probably the ones I think you know warrant a mention. Yeah. So, uh, but hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get something uh done and and finished and completed um before it all starts a, a, a huge panic. Uh, but there you go, guys, that is um the transfer show for you. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back in just over two hours with the uh, Newcastle United against Brighton preview with uh, the four of us back. And we'll also have uh, Chloe, special guest, in, uh, to give us a view from the Brighton side, of course. Chloe's been on the channel before. Uh, so thank you very much for your company today. And um, thank you to the Super Chatters. Thank you to the Mods. Uh, Alex, thank you for joining me today. And uh, we'll be back at 8 o'clock uh, for what should be a cracking preview show. Uh, so go get something to eat. Relax, enjoy the rest of the warm weather until we're back at 8 o'clock. But until then, we'll see you. Take care, guys.